Hi, Judy from Witch Peacecraft. Welcome to today's video. Well, it is time for my weekly catch up. I haven't done a lot this week. I have a finished object and a new cowl that I've started. So let's get started. I am wearing my finished object. It's not very good. Um, I should have worn something different underneath because you can't really see the colorway. It is a shawlette that I have made and I am really proud of it. I give myself a pat on the back because I'm not a great shawl maker, but here it is. This is a tutorial by Siren. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's called the Beginner's Elegant Shawl, and it's something I've always wanted to make, but I've balked at because it is such a fine um, yarn you have to use. But then I decided after making my autumn wing shawl with a four-ply, I was on a roll with a fine hook and finer thread. I thought I'd give this a go. And if, if I do say so myself, it turned out really well. I do like the border on this. I will put pictures at the end so you can check it out and see what you think. Tell me if you like the colourway. So the yarn I used, I bought a couple of years ago. I bought some in reds and creams, red creamy colour. And I bought this black and grey for me, I bought two cakes um, because I wanted to make something for myself with it. And when I started the project I had in mind, it did not suit in this thread. It was too fine. So I put it away in my yarn stock and I pulled it out to make the Elegant Shawl. So it is Lincraft, a local brand, um, Illusion Cake. Now they have discontinued these, but now I've got used to using them i am disappointed but that is the colorway i have two cakes um, they don't have color names on it i think they just have color numbers but it's 75 percent cotton 25 percent polyester and there are 600 mils in a cake and yeah i used one cake for my illusion shawl or my illusion elegant shawl that is all that's left over the reason I've always bought at this is because it's one of those yarns that is like loose three or four threads like that and they come apart when you're crocheting. But I discovered when I made another shawl, the easiest way to use them is you crochet a bit and then down your yarn thread, I just kept running my fingers and keeping them together and then crochet that bit and then do it again. And it is a bit time consuming but it works out really well and believe it or not this yarn is not that hard to frog because I did make a couple of mistakes it took me about a week to make it and yeah I am quite proud of myself there is my elegant beginner shawl now the thing about Siren's tutorial and why it was easy for me is once I started it it was like muscle memory, like I'd made it before. And I know I haven't made this particular tutorial before. So it must be very similar to something I have made before. But for the life of me, I can't remember what it is. And that's why I found it really easy. If you are a beginner and want to step it up, this, and you do use lightweight yarn, this is a great shawl to make, or shawlette. You can make it bigger into a full-size shawl. I made a shawlette because I'm going to sell it either in my Etsy shop or on my craft store. And I do get asked for like um, beach wraps that go around the waist. That's why I like the border. Anyway, I will put a picture of it in my seashawl along 2022 with um, my yarny corner with Alex. Because I'm really proud of it. And enter her make along with that one. So... And that, her make-along closes the 1st of March, so you've still got time to make a shawl or shawlette. She's just um, running the hashtag on Instagram and you post your photos on Instagram. So, the cowl I have started. Yes, it's finally here. Luck of the draw number five with Nan's Next Knots. Eee! I was so excited. I had my colours picked, my border done. And it was the 3rd of February here and I kept checking for her video and it wasn't there. Then I kicked myself because I realised she's Northern Hemisphere and it was still the second up there. Anyway, I took inspiration from her choice. Um, Nanny's doing 
Caribbean colours and tropical theme and it got me thinking about my colours. Now I live in Cairns in far north Queensland and it is in far north Queensland it is where the rainforest meets the reef. We have the Coranda rainforest quite close by, the Daintree rainforest and off the coast of where we live because we live in a beachside suburb is the Great Barrier Reef. I'll put a bit of info on the area in the description below so you know what I'm talking about. So my project is I am doing the sober granny blanket, a lapgan again, in colours which represent where the rainforest meets the reef. So for the rainforest, because the canopy of the rainforest is different greens, I'm going to use these two greens as my base colour. There is always a bit of beach before the rainforest meets the ocean and at the bottom of the reef there is always a bit of a sandy bottom. So this neutral represents the sand. We're in a tropical area with lots of sunshine so I have sun yellow gold to represent the sun and it also is one of the colours you'll find amongst the coral. To represent the ocean I have three to four, well three blues because you have the sky blue for the sky and sometimes the water is very light blue to a green to an electric blue and can even go to a purple. The deeper you go diving, the darker the water and electric blue is quite deep. So they're the colours for the reef. And for the coral you find on the reef, I am using fuchsia coral as my other two colours and I always take advice it's handy to have a ninth colour as a spare in case one of the colours keeps getting picked out in luck of the draw. And my spare colour is orange for Finding Nemo. So they are my colours for luck of the draw 5 that I will be using. It is Marvel 8 ply or 3 weight yarn and doing the Sober Granny and I have started. So like I said, I had my border done or my first two rows done of the two different greens down the bottom there ready to go for when Nan drew the first week out and then the first week came out and it was number four which happens to be this greeny blue which is called breakfast blue so I have done row, um, four rows of that one two three four rows of that and then I have done my next two rows of the base color ready for week number two so all in all, each week I'll do six rows for um, each section. And I've made it slightly smaller than my last um, sober granny blanket, but I do like this. Um, and it keeps me interested when I am making charity blankets, which this will probably become a charity blanket. I even have my turtle stitch marker on it from Barbara, my friend. She sent me a little turtle stitch marker and I put that on there. Because it is where the rainforest meets the reef. I'm really going to enjoy this and I like the fact that I've actually themed the colours to something this time. So that's it for me this week. It's Sunday. Um, this afternoon I'm going to be over dyeing some wool yarn from my wool store um, storage. I have a project on the go that I am making and I need more variety in the colours that I am making so I'm over dyeing some yarn that I have a lot of and I usually just over dye with food colouring and it won't matter once I've made this project. So that's what I'm doing this afternoon. Guys I hope you're keeping well and staying safe. Until next time you could join us for luck of the draw five and have a crafty day with us. I'll leave a link in the description below. Bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.